Hello, my name is Bill Spinelli. I'm an Applications Engineer at Photron USA. Today I'd like to show you how to set up and make your first recording with PFV4 and your Photron FastCam camera. To get started, we'll open up PFV4. On a brand new computer or first installation, you have to set your network settings. And there's a utility built in, PC network settings. You go to Settings, allow Windows to modify these settings and we're going to choose our local gigabit uh, local area connection which is here I'm going to set it with an IP address of dot three which will work for my computer but it could be any number uh, the Photron cameras have a, a default IP address of 192.168.0.10 so it cannot be uh, 10 but any other number you could use and it's also going to go and allow um, PFV to be a, a loud program in your Windows firewall. So hit set. And then close. And another thing we can do is verify our Ethernet settings. Uh, a safe setting of a packet size of 1458 and a packet count of 128 will you yield good performance and a uh, stable connection. Okay. And then now we'll search for cameras, or in this case just one camera. All right, so it found the camera. It's uh, in live mode and with high-speed photography, as you can see, the image is kind of uh, grainy and dark because you need supplemental lighting, especially if you're not recording outside, taking advantage of daylight. So currently, I don't have any lights turned on. And I'm verifying we're connected to this camera. I'm going to close this. And then now we see the camera. I'm at 1,000 frames per second. My shutter is 998 microseconds, which means we're going to be exposing the sensor. If we're taking a picture every millisecond, um, for just about that millisecond we're exposing the sensor to light and our resolution is currently set to 1024 by 640 it just depends on your camera what your resolution can be and I'm gonna go ahead and do a shading correction this will uh, take out any temporal noise um, out of the sensor I'll go ahead and turn my lights on and you can see the image gets much better when you have uh, supplemental lighting. What we're looking at is an industrial stapler from an um, industrial copy machine. I will turn on the uh, machine so you can see it moving. And you can see the gears and the uh, mechanical assemblies are moving. To make your first recording, we just click the record button. And then now it's armed, and I'll just click ready, and it'll actually um, record 2.9 seconds of this. And you can see it just finished. Turn off the motor. So now we're in memory mode, so we are uh, looking at what's in the uh, buffer of the camera. So right now it's we have 29, 11 frames of information, and I can scrub through the, the memory, and you can see it's playing back as I scrub through. We could also hit the play key and now it's playing back at 30 frames per second even though we captured at a thousand so it's 33 times slower and we can slow it down even more go to 10 or 5 frames per second to review. So everything is nice and crisp except the center gear and we're seeing a little bit of blur around this gear and what's causing that is that it's actually too fast. The shutter needs to, uh, we need to shorten the duration of the shutter. So we're exposing 998 microseconds, but if we did another recording at maybe 500 microseconds, we would uh, get rid of that motion blur. The sacrifice here is we'd have to double the light or adjust the aperture on the lens, but that's a discussion for another video. So the next step would be to uh, select an area of interest that you'd want to download and archive. So I'll hit pause. So I'll find my first frame of interest and I'm setting my start frame here. You can see the representation of my memory is gray in this section and this is my active memory. 
and then I'll play through. And we'll do one complete rotation. So this will be my last frame of interest. So this area here is what I want to download to my hard drive to analyze later. I then go to save. I'm going to save it as an MRAW, which is the raw file format of the Photron FastCam. It's like the digital negative. And uh, so I can reopen it and make as many videos as I want and adjust uh, image characteristics from that. So my default, I'm saving to my H drive, and I just click Save. And now it's through the Ethernet, the Gigabit Ethernet, downloading 471 frames. And now it's finished. So we're still looking at the memory of the camera. We click over to File, and we can actually open Photron image data. Deep modified. And here is the video. So now we're playing from the hard drive of the computer the MRAW file. And you can see I can slow it down, speed it up. So the camera would not have to be connected for this since the MRAW is on the hard drive. So for distribution, if you wanted to share this video with other people, you'd want to put it in a file format that's friendly for transport, like a AVI or MP4. So to do that, we just go back to save and change it to either AVI or an MP4. So MP4s are really good to uh, tablets and phones can also view them. So we're going to save it. And now it's rendering an MP4 from the MRAW data. And then here is the MP4 file along with the CIHX, which is a metadata file um, with all the information describing it. You don't have to keep it, but it's recommended if you want to load it back into PFE. And here's Windows playing the MP4 file that we just made. That concludes this video. See you again soon.